Hello, GMAT test takers. As you go through your study plan, you'll probably notice that some topics are lower frequency than others, and that difficulty within each topic varies greatly. We're going to share how frequencies and difficulty levels can inform your study plan. While you're here, please like this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to our channel for more GMAT test-taking tips and strategies. So, should you spend time on GMAT topics that are low frequency and or very hard? Maintaining your balance between solidifying your strengths and improving your weaknesses is already a difficult task. It's even harder when you are short on GMAT prep time. You'll definitely want to budget your limited time wisely. You may be nervous about having to relearn entirely foreign concepts, but you can take a little sigh of relief because the concepts you're familiar with are usually the most commonly tested. Knowledge of the fundamentals of math and verbal is especially important. These concepts make up the bulk of the test and are thus the highest priority. Concepts of moderate frequency can be considered second in importance. Prioritize the fundamentals more, but be sure not to neglect these. On the other hand, areas that are uncommon on the test have the lowest studying priority. Even if these concepts appear on the exam, at most, you will have one or two questions in each of these areas. Instead, you should strengthen the areas with which you already have some familiarity. You are much more likely to see these concepts on exam day. For example, you don't need to practice combination or permutation problems more than 10 times until you get the hang of them enough to get through the test. With a little practice, you should be able to handle most of the problems the GMAT presents. Even if the problem is very difficult, just learning the basics is enough to understand the language of the question and to make an educated guess. There are some concepts in the GMAT that make students feel the need to spend time studying difficult problems and worrying about concepts that are beyond the scope of the GMAT. But don't fall into that trap. The number of each question type in the GMAT varies from test to test, but you can be confident that your test will only show a few instances of unusual topics. In conclusion, if you find a question difficult during the test, you should quickly move on and instead focus on problems that are easy to accomplish and less time consuming. The same principle applies to your studies. Focus on the fundamentals and leave off the niche topics until you have time left over before your test. When you are developing and following your study plan, take note of the topics that appear at the lowest and highest frequencies and monitor how you perform at various difficulty levels. The frequencies and difficulty levels of different question topics and types should inform the development of your study plan. Always start with the fundamentals. Only spend your time on low frequency or very hard topics if you still have time remaining after solidifying your foundations. Now let's get studying.